Well, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the New Moon Conference Call. Uh, this is Barbara, and I'm up north today I'm in Michigan. And I just want to welcome everyone to this New Moon Call. This is the first day of the third month. We just want to welcome all our family and friends of Yah that are here today by the telephone or internet, or maybe you're listening to the recording. Uh, we just want to invite you to go to the website, lunarsabbathday.com. There are a lot of good articles there, videos there. And don't forget, on the events page, you can scroll down to the bottom and see how to connect with us every Sabbath and New Moon Day. So I just want to welcome everyone today. And today our discussion is about the original timekeeping system is about new moon. Is new moon on the full moon? And uh, many of us are on Facebook and things, and there are a lot of people on there that are discussing it and saying um, it is a full moon, but uh, I don't believe it is. Oh, it's kind of hard to hear me. Okay, I got that note in there. Okay, is that a little bit better? So, um, so on the, can you hear me okay, everybody? Yeah. Okay, all right. So anyways, the title is, Is the New Moon the Full Moon? And I believe the answer is no. And there are a lot of good reasons. I have my reasons, and this is a document by Troy Miller, and I think it's a pretty good document. And uh, we're just going to kind of go over that today. And if you're new to the Lunar Sabbath, just be patient with uh, our brothers and sisters because um, we are thankful that we're all coming off the Gregorian calendar and learning about the creation calendar, but you might find somebody keeps New Moon Day a little bit differently than you do. So we uh, need to have patience and love for one another. But um, it is hard when uh, I know Brother Mark on Facebook is going back and forth with a lot of these people uh, that do see New Moon as a full moon. And... Um, it is difficult uh, how to explain it or what are the reasons. And so uh, we'll just go ahead and start reading this. I was wondering, uh, do, is there anybody out there that could see the screen that could, like, read the first three paragraphs? And we'll just take, kind of take turns reading here today. And we can, can stop and discuss it. Okay, I heard somebody. Go ahead. I can do it for you. Um, okay, Mary. Yep, speak right up. For hundreds of years, people have accepted the first visible crescent <clears throat> excuse me, of the Jews at the announcement of the new month in Scripture. We have not found this to be the case. Rather, this is practice was picked up by, by in Babylon, Babylon. However, there is a growing movement that says that the full moon is actually the new moon. We'll address this issue in this study. The first uh, phrase oh. of... Uh, Sorry. My screen, screen Your screen left. Is it back? No. What? Okay. Oh. It's back. Okay. <laughs> the, <laughs> the phrase uh, first of the month or new moon is the Hebrew word Kodesh, strong H, 2320 and is used 279 times in scripture. It tells the, the full moon, Hebrew word Kesh, Strong's H3677, is used all of but twice in the scripture. Kodesh something, is something sometimes used to mean month, but often is used to indicate the new moon the first day of the month. Kodesh comes from the word word, H twenty three eighteen. That means to rebuild. From the full moon phrase, the moon is torn down, not rebuilt. I have a hard time believing that the father would tear down figuratively the moon and tell Israel that it was really being rebuilt. 
Okay. All right. I'm going to make the screen just a little bit bigger, I think, if that goes well. Ah, that's too big. <laughs> I guess I better <laughs> yeah, just leave it like this. Okay. There we go. So, got, got a little bit better. Okay. So, Kodesh means to rebuild. Rebuild. And then, yeah. okay, we'll go down to that. Uh, we're not reading every paragraph. You guys will study on your own this, but we're going to go through some of it. Um, go ahead right there where it says Genesis. This is a person that wrote okay. an article, I believe. Okay. Gen- Genesis does not understand why this, wor- why this word is translated. It is because the root etymology of this word means to cover up, fully covered. Concealed or hidden, no, no full of light. Apparently, this word that has been translated as full moon has been mistranslated. It should be fully covered or dark of the moon. I'm not sure if you're considered it, but it's very difficult to hide a full moon. You may have a cloud cover, but sometimes somewhere is going to see that things are for sure. Uh, I had not seen uh, Genesis' co- commentary before. His confusion over the use of this word is priceless. Some say that the moon did not exist until the fourth day of creation, and then Yah- Yahweh was forced to create a four-day old moon since time on Earth began four days earlier Look at Genesis 1 again. Everything in the heavens and everything on earth was spoken into existence in Genesis 1-1. From that point on, he just moved everything around to his liking. For the fourth day of creation, the word Moses used was made Asher, which does not, which does not, it means the advanced upon or appointed. For instance, he appointed the moon for the seasons, Psalms 104.19. Here the full moon as new moon suffers to a total kill shot. In this model, the father is forced to create the moon from scratch, four days past full. Sure, he could do that, but why should he have to do, have to? The moon is part of his clock. Time on earth began in Genesis 1-1, correct. In the model we see written in scripture, Genesis 1-1 proves the dark of the moon as the new moon as darkness covered everything. Oh, that's right. right. That's a good point. That's right. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I didn't think of that before because he said it was dark and void and that the heavens were already created so the moon was dark. Okay, there's one more little paragraph. Go ahead. Here is a study from a friend of mine. According to Brother Matthew, Psalms 81, 3, has been misunderstood and is compelling case for those who have accepted the moon as a new moon to reexamine their position. Okay, so there's an article here from Brother Matthew Jensen, and most of you... Mm -hmm. uh, have heard yeah. him before. And uh, did anybody have a comment so far or a question um, from what uh, this introduction that Troy gave? No, I think it's very good. This is Susan. But it's also, okay. I thought, you know, in all of nature, anything new is small. The new peach things are just little, little nubs on there. A new puppy is very, very tiny. A new anything, a new baby is very, very tiny to begin with. When it's new, it's tiny. And so I think, yeah, it is natural. That's the way it's meant, and that may not make sense to anybody, but that makes sense to me. Okay, thank you, Susan. Yes, and it's all it's all in scripture if you just study it and pray for it. It's easy to do. And the main number, I'm not trying to discredit any of our brothers or sisters because there are no, a lot no, no. that do see new moon as a full moon now. This is a no. new movement that's went on the last few years. But we, most of us on this group see new moon as dawn after conjunction 
or maybe right. you see it a little bit differently by opposition or something. Yeah. But we are just mm-hmm. trying to study this a little bit because uh, a lot of this is going around on Facebook and Internet and everywhere, and uh, yeah. we're we, just going to review just don't, it. Yeah, we're just not going to judge anybody. Let them, let the Father yeah. work with them. Yeah, and... Um, we have to kind of decide for ourselves because it seems like to me sometimes you can spend a lot of time, for me, uh, studying something where I already feel like it's not right and I have the reasons. But, um, okay, is there anybody else on the call who wants to help Mary out? Uh, you want to read a few paragraphs? Or I Ellie, have you? Okay. Yeah, I have okay. That. I have it all right. Just, yeah, just tell me where to read. Okay, is the full moon. Thank you for reading, Mary. We'll just take turns. Okay, Ellie, is the yep. full moon, the new moon. This is by um, Matthew Jensen in Conyers, Georgia. And okay, we'll read want- uh, all the way down to where he starts the scriptural evidence. Just read three paragraphs, I guess. Three paragraphs. Okay. Um, there is a belief among some brethren involved in understanding Yahweh's correct calendar that the new moon is actually the full moon. They believe that both the conjunction and the first visible crescent of the moon have nothing to do with the beginning of a new month. This short article will examine the points they give and show why this teaching is not scriptural. We ask all brethren to diligently consider our conclusions and let the scriptures be your final authority. The passage given most often by the new full moon advocates can be found in the book of Psalms 81, verse 3 to 6. In the American Standard Version of the scriptures, it reads as follows. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast days. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the Almighty of Jacob. He appointed it in Joseph for a testimony. When he went out over the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I knew not, I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hand were freed from the basket. That's three. Do you want me to go anymore? Um, Yeah, okay. So then the scriptural evidence, they give. So this is the opposing view. We're not trying to pick on anybody. There might be someone here on the call today that believes this way. But uh, the scriptural evidence they give from this passage is, number one, there is no conjuncting. And in between the phases of new moon and full moon, number two, verse three, Closes by saying on our feast day, not days. And verse and number three, this plainly identifies the new moon as a full moon. Thus, the full moon is the first day of any scriptural month. Okay, so those are the opposing views. So uh, go ahead, Ellie, and read it. Ah! Oh man, I don't know how far I went. You guys, this is technical difficulty when you're on my end trying to get these buttons to work right. Okay, where do you want? You want me to just um, keep going? Yeah, just keep going. If you see a stopping place, we'll just stop in a little bit. And when, did anybody have anything to say about those, uh, anything yet about these objections that are given by the opposing view? No. <clears throat> okay, go ahead, Ellie. Somebody, Martin put a uh, note that in the stuffer, Psalms 81.3, blow the shofar on the dark new moon today on our solemn feast. Okay, well, that's good to know on the dark new moon. So thank you, Brother Martin. That was in the chat. Okay, we'll go ahead with the first of all, there is a conjunctive. Okay, first of all, is there a conjunctive and between the phases new moon and full moon? No, there is not. However, what has been overlooked is that the Hebrew word translated new moon can also be translated as month and in many times in scripture the hebrew word is defined by sec which is sect strong's exhaustive concordance as followed 
uh, in H2320 in the uh, Strong's Concordance means Kodesh from H2318, the new moon by implication a month. And then it says month again, new moon. Also notice a few times in scripture where the word Kodesh has been translated month. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh, seventh, 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broke up. This is from Genesis 7:11, And the people came up out of the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east border of Jericho. This is in Joshua 4, uh, verse 19. As you can see, both of these passages, along with a host of others, translate the Hebrew word kodesh as month. Notice also that these passages refer to the 17th day of the kodesh and the 10th day of the kodesh. In further examination of Psalms 81, verse 3 to 6, we shall see that it refers to the 15th day of the kodesh. That is because the passage in Psalms 81.3 could be rendered as blow the trumpet at the new month at the full moon, similar to the rendering of the New English version of the Bible. Blow the horn for the new month, for the full month on the day of our pilgrim feast. This is a law for Israel and an ordinance for Israel the Almighty of Jacob, and that's Psalm 81, verse 3 and 4. This would allow the passage to be understood as blowing a trumpet on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and this is further seen from the context of the passage. Psalm 81, verse 5, shows that Yahweh went out through the land of Egypt. Verse 6 shows that Yahweh removed Israel's shoulders from the burden and hands from the pots. What this is saying is that the full moon was the day when Israel was delivered from the Egyptian bondage. What day was Israel delivered from bondage? This is a question they're asking. And they departed from Rameses in the first month on the 15th day of the first month. On the morrow, after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a a high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. This is in Numbers 33.3, the King James Version. Numbers 33.3 tells us that Israel was delivered from a Ramas, oh, I can't even say that, Ramaneth on the 15th day of the first month, which is Kodesh, Psalms 81, verse 3 to 6, tells us that Israel was delivered from Egypt on the day of the full moon. Thus, the 15th day of the month has to be the full moon and not a new moon. Psalms 81.3 is to be understood as saying to blow up the trumpet in the first month or feast month on the day of the full moon. However, is the passage of Psalms merely speaking of a singular man named Joseph? seeing that it plainly says that Yahweh appointed this in Joseph. One might conclude the children of Israel are not in the picture here. Let us notice the full context of the passage. First, I should point out that the previous chapter, which is chapter 80, uses the name Joseph in a similar fashion as Psalms 81 verse 5. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that sittest above the cherubim, shine forth. And that's from Psalms 80, verse 1. The name Joseph here refers to the nation of Israel, as seen by the statement directly before it. Yahweh is the shepherd of Israel, or of Joseph. Thus, Joseph is a name that can refer to the entire nation of Israel, collectively, This is exactly the case in Psalm 81. In looking at the entire context, we can be assured that the Israelites' deliverance from Egypt on the 15th day of the month is what is being spoken of here, 
and that the passage is in no way refers to the singular man, Joseph. Thou well, callest... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, that's interesting, you know, that um, you're speaking of Joseph as the nation. So I, I... Okay, go ahead, and then we'll stop, and anybody can uh, make a comment. Okay. We'll finish reading about this Joseph part, and then we'll stop for a second. Okay. It says, Thou callest in trouble, and I delivered thee. In brackets, it says the same people he delivered in verse 6. End of bracket. I answered thee in the sacred place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. In brackets, it says Israel was proved at Meribah. This is from Exodus 17, verses 1 to 7. End of bracket. Shelah, hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wouldst hearken unto me, There shall be no strange mighty one be in thee. Neither shall thou worship any foreign mighty one. I am Yahweh, the Almighty, who brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. In brackets, this happened to Israel. This is in Exodus 20, verse 2, end of bracket. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people hearkened not to my voice. And Israel would none of me. So I let them go after the stubbornness of their heart, that they might walk in their own counsels. All that my people would hearken unto me, that Israel would walk in my ways. This is from Psalms 81, verse 7 to 13. Do you want me to keep going? Okay. Uh, yeah, just that last paragraph, and then we'll stop for a second. Okay. I might the have term, to go get the baby. The terms Israel in verse 4, Jacob, verse 4, Joseph, verse 5, his, verse 6, thou and thee, verses 7, and my people, verses 8, are all referring to the same subject the nation or the people of Israel. Yahweh's statue and law, in brackets, of the full moon festival, unleavened bread and tabernacles, end of bracket, was ordained when he delivered them on the full moon, the 15th day of the first month. And this is in Numbers 33, verse 3. Let me briefly add that even if the passage is speaking duly about both the nation of Israel and the singular man, Joseph. It does not prove anything for the new full moon advocate. The same exogenous of the text stands firm. That is, the full moon is the 15th day of any given month on Yahweh's calendar. For even further evidence... Okay. We'll just stop there a second. Um, okay, we read quite a bit, and it was speaking about Joseph. It's talking about the nation of Israel. That was a good point. And did anybody pick up anything you want to discuss or that you just learned in this article that, about Psalms 81 and uh, about the exodus of the, out of Egypt? Well, they, they had to be able to see, and I believe that's why Yahweh sent them during the full moon. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I mean, when it's full moon out here, you have to close the blinds and it's light in the house. It's light all over the whole countryside. And I think they went out in full light of the Egyptians to see them. And Mm -hmm. uh, they knew they couldn't stop them. But uh, thank you, Mary. I agree. Anybody else? Any comments about what? We've already um, read about the full moon or about the exodus. But Martin wrote something in here. In the text, Martin wrote, I think Genesis 1, 2 to 3 would be the best way to say the be. the beginning was a dark moon. Yeah, because he said, let there be light. So... I agree, Brother Martin, because why would he say, let there be light, if we had a big full moon there? Um, 
Anybody else? Before we got a little bit more. It's not very long. We're not going to go all the way through everything. I'd like to go through, um, actually, I think let's skip down a little bit and go to these calendars that Troy did. Oh, well, here's the Brother Matthew on the bottom of page four. Maybe I'll read that, then we'll go and see what Troy says. In studying the pa- passages in the scriptures which use the Hebrew word chag, you will find that in reference to Yah's appointed times, it refers to a pilgrimage festival. In scripture, there are three pilgrimage festivals, Exodus 23, 14-17. These three pilgrimage festivals, or chags, are identified as the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Tabernacles. The first day of any given month is never identified as a pilgrim's feast or chag. Thus, Psalm 81.3 is not referring to the first day of a month, but rather the 15th day of a festival month. Specifically, the first and seventh days months of Yah's calendar. I might also add that the Companion Bible footnote on Psalms 81.3 under the heading Day states that some codices with two early printed editions and SYR read Days and Festivals. Psalms 81, 3 to 6, the passage usually used to prove new moon is the full moon, actually disproves the belief. The passage is easily understood when examined carefully and in its entirety. That's the end of Brother Matthew Jensen's study. So, uh, any comments? That was a good study Brother Jensen gave, and also Troy has a little more here, but any questions or comments? Um, mm-hmm. What Martin had said was that below the shofar at the dark moon was in the sephir, and he said Genesis 2 to 3, it was dark because then it became light, and he said that was the best verse for him. So um, let's see. We'll follow that link. Kadesh, a primary root to be new, causatively to rebuild and renew. So Kodesh, that's basically what that means. And I wanted to get down here to some of these calendars. Okay, okay. Yeah, would Mary or Ellie, would you want to read the last paragraph on page five? Some who accept this is the beginning of that paragraph. Some who accept the full moon as a new moon, <clears throat> excuse me, believe so because it is their thought that the father would not have Israel leave Egypt on the 15th of the month during the full moon, pointing out it, that Israel could not hide clearly that the Egyptians would follow Israel out of, out of town for part of the father's plan. It did not matter whether there was a full moon out or not. How are you going to hide the foot and the hoof prints of three million people and probably that many animals in the desert sand? A blind man could have followed those tracks. The whole episode was to show Israel the power of Yah. You can walk out of Egypt under a full moon after robbing them blind, they still will not be able to touch you, even though they pursue you with horse and and drawn chariots. The father was not trying to hide Israel. They were bait. So that's pretty good. He walked right out right in front of Egypt and said, here we go, here we go in our freedom, here we go in the light of the full moon. Yeah, and then, you know, because, I mean, uh, it didn't matter. To, I mean, the Egyptians, it was already in the Father's plan to uh, have the Egyptians, as it would, I think, to follow them, to either strengthen them that it's all right to keep on going. He's there, and the Father's there. He'll protect us. That's okay, yes, yeah, that's right. He will protect us, even in broad daylight or broad moonlight. <laughs> uh, right in front of our enemies, we're going to walk out of Egypt here one of these days, aren't we? 
Right. So now the next paragraph, Ellie, well, you could read that. That's uh, the what you had mentioned the other day when we started talking about this uh, on the conference call. Uh, and this was a good point. Uh, maybe we'll just uh, read uh, read just a I guess read down to the bottom of that page there. Um, starting with the paragraph, how could there ever? Okay. How could there ever be two days of new moon celebration if the full moon was the new moon? There is a two-day new moon celebration in 1 Samuel verse 20 and Acts uh, chapter 20 verse 5 to 7. Of course, only one was the first day of the month but there were two dark days that month, clearly a 30-day month. The 29th was the last Sabbath, followed by day 30 and day 1, both dark days. There is only one full moon ever, though it looks full, for three to four days sometimes. And even then, which of these, sorry, which of those three to four days are the one to new moon days. Only the dark days solve this d- dilemma. The model I present does not need logic or speculation. I just present the evidence, all of it. The new moon is pointed out by the prophets as the third category of day. That's in Ezekiel 46, verse 1, Amos chapter 8, verse 5, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23, and Second Kings, chapter 4, verse 23. So it has to be a third category of day at creation. The weekdays are illuminated. Yahweh lit the sun in Genesis verse 1, sorry, chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. So the new moon days must look different. The sun tells you a new moon has begun. The moon tells you which day it is. The gate to the inner court uh, in Ezekiel 46, verse 1, acts as a switch. It is open during new moon and Sabbath, but shut all six working days. This means that new moon should never fall on a work day because there are six working days every month in which the gate is shut. This is scripture. So why on the Gregorian calendar does the new moon fall on any or every day of the week? When it falls on a Wednesday, is the gate open or shut? There is no right answer because you are applying the new moon, in brackets, a segment of the Father's calendar, end of bracket, to the man-made papal pagan calendar that eliminated use of a new moon as the beginning of each month in 46 B.C. Okay, let's just uh, wait right there a little bit. And so he says uh, the new moon, Kodesh, is the rebuilding phase of the moon. And then he goes again about what did it look like in the beginning at creation. And then um, also he says... Uh, the, when they came out of Babylon, of course, they started keeping the crescent. Uh, I don't know what they did before. It's documented that at the time when they left Babylon that they were keeping the crescent moon. So, um, so uh, hey, Mary, can you see where I'm at where it's highlighted in the Babylonian model? And we'll just read a little bit more. And then there, he has these uh, calendars here. I thought we could look at them. Uh, okay. Just a little bit about that Babylonian model. Uh, I lost it. There it is. Okay. I'm not sure what page it is on to help Ellie. you got to go up a little further, I see. Okay. Oh, go up further? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> In the Babylonian model, bracket, counting the months from the first visible question, bracket, the quarter phrase announce, announce uh, the first day of their week, not the Sabbath. This is because they do not start their month until the light is lit. 
the first illuminated moon is seen. This would equate to the first day of the creation week, not the segment of time mentioned in Genesis 1-1, which was dark. These folks call the second day of the month the first day, thus the first quarter phrase is only five days away, not six. In order for folks to observe this model, to have the quarter phrase phrases announce their Sabbath is for the first week of the month to consist of five working days and a Sabbath, rather than a commanded six work days and a Sabbath. No bracket. Notice if you are one of these folks and do not believe me, I adjure in the name of the living Yah to go outside and look up. Bracket. It is because of this era that some believe that the Sabbath of the lunar calendar are on the 7th, the 14th, and the 21st, and the 28th day of the month, forcing the new moon to be a weekday. The problem with this is that Passover is the 14th day of the month and is never the Sabbath. It is always preparation day for the first day of unleavened bread, bracket, the 15th of the beads which is also the weekly Sabbath. Every Sabbath can be dated, identified in scriptures as, full, as all, excuse me, always full on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, or the 29th, and the 29th day of the month. The first quarter phrase uh, moon that announces the first Sabbath of the month will be seen directly overhead the evening before the 8th day of the month as the sun is setting. The second quarter, bracket, uh, full moon, will be seen rising in the east as the sun is setting the evening before the 15th of the month. The third quarter moon will be seen directly overhead at dawn on the morning of the 22nd day of the month. The last uh, waning silver may or not, may not be seen close to the eastern horizon at dawn on the morning of the 29th, announcing the last status of the month. Bracket, it depends on how close to the sun's glare it is, bracket, if it is seen. This generally means two two-day new moon celebrations coming. If not, this generally means a one-day new moon is about to follow. Okay, thank you, Mary. <clears throat> thank you, Ellie. And so he's describing here when we see those quarter phases, and mm -hmm. to me, the geometry of the moon with it being mm -hmm. slid exactly in half is, shows that you've got the first week, and then a full circle is uh, halfway through the month on the 15th day. Then the other uh, side of the moon, the last quarter, is exactly sliced in half. And right. so I like the geometry of it. So uh, any comments so far uh, before we look at these uh, calendar samples uh, on anything we read already or no. anything? That, go ahead. No, okay. okay, where, and then he's got, okay, so, so there's a lot of you on the phone, maybe about a third of you on the computer. So uh, what he does is he puts a visual up here for us to see um, what it would look like if you put full moon as day one on your calendar. So in that case, day eight would be the last quarter, and it would show uh, the right half of the moon black and the course, and then the 15th shows a little bit of a sliver, and then the 22nd, um, the quarter phase is already passed, it's concave, and then the 29th is a full moon, again, it would be no quarter phase. Uh, the first quarter he's got would be the 23rd of the month. Okay, so in this case, if full moon was day one, he has the... The last quarter phase, day eight, but then uh, the totally dark moon would have been day 16, 
and then the first quarter phase of day day 23, and then back to new moon on day one. So um, let's see, what does he say? We Where are the quarter phases to announce the third and fourth Sabbath in this model? Uh, and that would be um, starting with the full white moon. And uh, there would be this no third. Uh, go ahead, Mary. This is what happens when using the full moon as a new moon. If there's only one dark day after the second Sabbath, Remember, there are approximately seven days between the quarter phases of the moon. This should be a big hint. From the last silver to the first quarter, there are eight days. If there is no, is it one dark day after the... Let me go down here and find the rest of that paragraph. Okay. After the Sabbath or the ninth days, bracket, if there are two day dark days, bracket, notice that the first quarter moon is not seen until after the day, until the day after the third Sabbath of the full moon, new moon model is over. And there is no quarter phrase moon to announce the last Sabbath because the full moon is wasted as the new moon. How can we say the Sabbath is regulated by the moon with this model? Two of the Sabbaths are not announced by a quarter phrase, but you're approximately, approximately Seven days apart. Okay, so two of the Sabbaths would not be announced by a quarter phase. Right. Okay, then he's got, but it gets worse if there are two dark days after the second Sabbath. So, uh, okay, we go to the next page. Uh, he's got another calendar sample here. Further down here, page uh, 10, Ellie. Uh, another, um, because Ellie has the script in her hand because she can't get on the Internet. Um, so okay. what, what does it start with? I don't have to. Um, it's the next uh, picture of calendars. It starts with it seems. Oh, and, it seems to be a double standard? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems to be a double standard to say that the appointed times of Yahweh are regulated by the moon then not permit the lunar phases to speak. The quarter phases are seven days apart for a reason and distinctly different from the other illuminated phases. It seems to be a shame to ignore this natural evidence. Israel certainly did not. Historians have discovered and admitted that the week was Sabbath and the new moon, Rosh Hadash, both periodically occurring, reoccurring in the course of a year. The new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was dependent upon the lunar cycle. This is from the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. It says, um, page, I'm not sure, because mine is all written over the calendar. I don't know if yours is. Oh, okay, mine's not. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll stop right there, Ellie. So, uh, of course, in the Jewish Encyclopedia, page 410, it says the new moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, uh, by the moon phases. So um, here we go. We put another uh, example with full moon as day one, showing that the third quarter is off, and the, the, eighth, the, sec the first Sabbath would be off, and the second Sabbath would be off, and the third Sabbath would be off. So with having your geometry off on the moon, that makes a difference for me. Let's see. Now, and can then... You, can you do the, the correct one? Okay, then the correct one is the one that we're going by with the dark day as day one new moon day. And um, mm -hmm. each lunar month was divided into four parts corresponding to the four phases. Okay, well, let's just stop there with this model up here. This is what we're going by, that the dark moon is the beginning of the month, and it grows and grows and grows. Like in nature, nature starts out small, a little mm -hmm. tiny seed, and grows into a full. So we are seeing the moon grow into the waxing into a full moon, then waning back to dark. So, uh, okay, we'll stop our reading right there. We have about 10 minutes for discussion. So I'm just going to open up the floor for anybody uh, to have a comment.
I, I like what Ellie said the other day was, too, was that how would we have a two-new moon day, a two-day new moon, which, you know, at the time of Israel, it was always a 30-day month, and there was always a transition day and a new moon day. So how would you do that with uh, that full moon that looks full for three or four days? And there were a lot of other good points here, too. Israel came out, I believe, you know, with it being the sky all lit up, fully lit. And uh, the geometry of it, the first quarter and all that, and the full and the last quarter. So uh, any other comments before we wrap up this recording? And uh, Martin wrote, I just thought of this. The full moon people use the start call so to try and prove their theory, but this does not add, oh, they use the stars, but this does not add the stars for that purpose, Psalms 104.19, because that's what Martin was saying, that he's saying, well, they have the stars, they said the stars help uh, point the full moon as a new moon, and so, but he appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knows it's going down. And I know the stars are up there, and they mean a lot in in the calendar, but I think the moon is stating the phases. It's seven days apart, and the quarters announce the Sabbath, I believe. Thank you, Martin, for that comment. Do we have another comment before we close the recording? Uh, this is Ellie. On um, Troy's website, he actually has a part two to this um Oh, uh, yeah, there's a part one, which we just went through, and there's a part two. So if okay. people want, unless you're going to send both of them out. Oh, okay, and that's creation calendar. Okay, maybe I can go get the other one, too, and send them both out. And uh, does he address the stars, what they talk about the stars, then, I wonder, on that second one? I don't know. I just noticed it when I went in to get it. Okay, well, I'll try to send them both out uh, on the recording link. And I'm going to close the recording, and we can still hang around and chat and visit. So uh, we'll be back uh, next Sunday, which will be uh, the first Sabbath of the month. It will be the eighth day on the Father's calendar, and it will be May 12 on the Gregorian calendar.